Hello, this is a video on how to place a transvenous pacemaker here in our emergency department in El Paso, Texas. There are plenty of resources online on how to do this procedure. This one will be very specific to our equipment. Our introducer is a six French cordis. You will also need a pacemaker wire and a pulse generator. Additionally, you need everything you need to place a central line, including sterile drape, sterile gloves, sterile gown, a hat, a mask, everything you need. Additionally, you'll want a ultrasound and a sterile probe cover. Generally, we will use the right IJ and the left subclavian is also a reasonable approach. Other approaches are suboptimal. Here's a look at our kit and the good Dr. Crawford will go through a dry run now. So this is a six French cordis, We're able to take the introducer out from the inside, remove the plastic capping. This should all be done with sterile gloves using this just for demonstration. The introducer will go in through the back of the cordis. Here. Use your standard Seldinger technique with the wire. And then advance both of these together, removing the introducer after it's in place. And the diaphragm in here should close off to prevent any leakage of uh, blood. From here, you'll be able to use the sheath, and the sheath has an indentation that will slide on and slide to lock. This will prevent it from falling off. Inside of here, this is where you will place balloon end of the transvenous pacer. You can still check the balloon before insertion. This balloon will hold one and a half cc's of air. And this will help it to float down into the correct place following venous return into the heart. This is just a test, but before it's inserted, that balloon will have to be deflated completely. Inserts through the back end of the introducer sheath. And this will go down through and you know that you are past the introducer port here when you get to the three lines on the, inch, or on the uh, transvenous pacer. From here, you'll actually inflate the balloon. close this off and begin advancing, looking at the monitor now for changes because you have the tip portion connected to the monitor using the, the attached metal piece so it will take the reading from here to know where you are relative to the cardiac function. Once you're done and at the correct depth, which is going to be close to 60 because of the additional space that's taken up. You can expand out the sheath to hold it in place. This will keep this sterile so you could make small adjustments. Okay, let's get to the real thing. You got an old fella, he doesn't look so good, his EKG doesn't look so good, you're a little bit worried about him, and you think you should put a pacer. You tried transcutaneous pacing, but it doesn't really work. So, you're ready to go for it. You're going to go over to Trauma 1, and look in this Pixis here. All of the really seldom used equipment generally lands in this Pixis. You'll want that arrow kit, that's your introducer. You'll want the pacer wire right below it, and you want the pulse generator off to the left. 
Then you just need to get it all laid out just like any central line. You should have done a few central lines before going for a transvenous. If this is your first time, I feel bad for you. But you'll get the guy prepped, you'll get him draped, you'll get all your equipment ready, and you'll use standard Seldinger technique to access the right IJ. It is pretty straightforward. You'll use your introducer needle and an ultrasound, get the IJ, don't put it in big red, don't pop a pneumo. Just get it in there and get some blood. Just like that. Once you get the needle in, you put the wire through the needle, pull the needle, cut a little skin nick, and then the catheter over the wire. This cordis is a little bit easier than a triple lumen in that the dilator is integrated into the assembly and you don't need to do a separate dilator pass. You generally can just put the catheter right over the wire. It goes on just like that. Then you take the wire and the introducer out. You could pull them both out at the same time if you wanted to. This device has a self-sealing diaphragm, so you don't really worry about getting a bunch of blood everywhere. Hopefully you already checked your balloon and hooked yourself up to the monitor like this. Once you do that, you can take the sheath and thread it over the transvenous pacer wire. That makes it a little bit easier to thread the wire through the port. You'll want to mind the curve of the wire. You want to curve it towards the inlet of the atria so that it can float in easier. So at this point, you advance the wire until you get to the three little marks that Dr. Crawford showed you earlier. Those marks mean that it's time to inflate the balloon because the tip is past the end of the catheter. So you inflate the balloon and then you advance the wire until you see what they call an injury pattern. This pattern is really just representative of the electricity from the ventricular wall going straight into the pacer wire and straight to the monitor. It's like a short circuit. There are plenty of other references on how to see it, though here is a pretty good look of it on our monitor. It indicates proper placement with the tip of the wire touching the wall of the ventricle. You might see some artifact before if you're scraping the wall of the atria, but this is what you're looking for. Once you have proper placement, you can tie everything down, you can extend your sheath, and then you need to hook the wire up to a pulse generator. There are these little adapters that come with the equipment. The red is positive, the black is negative, and you hook it into this machine just like this. Then you set a rate and you start to dial up the voltage. Some people start at zero and they dial up until they get capture. Some people start at 10 and then they dial back until they lose capture, then creep it up a little. Either way is fine as long as you get capture. It looks like this. Then you'll want to tie your stuff down. You want to put some Tegaderm, package this guy up, and get him out of your ER. That is it. That's all we got to say. Good luck.